Hi, I'm Brad Cox with BradCoxWorkshops.com. And today, in fact, right this moment, as of now, <laughs> as of right now, there are some new updates to Adobe Photoshop CC. And it's called Adobe Photoshop CC 2015.5. So this is kind of the half year big release, uh, some new stuff being released. And to get it, really all you do is just go up to your Creative Cloud and go to check for updates. If it doesn't pop up already, go to check for updates. That'll make it force your computer to force to go out there and look for the updates. It'll start downloading the newest Photoshop. And let's talk about some of the newest features that you're gonna to see today in your new version of Photoshop. So first, there's a lot of performance updates. Uh, a lot, and that's like kind of under the hood things, just making things run faster. And there's also a lot of magic, things like new tools, new spaces, new ways of Photoshop just kind of being magical, kind of just taking a lot of the work out of our hands. So let's go through some of these. Uh, some of the performance uh, enhancements address things that uh, we've turned in, you know, you and I, all of us as photographers in terms of feedback, uh, a lot of uh, improvements under the hood. and Things like, for instance, a 65% improvement in the app download speed, faster font previews, faster file open time, brush and layer optimizations for improved responsiveness, and a dra dramatic speed improvements in content-aware operations. And as we're going to show you, there's actually a new content-aware tool, which is pretty cool. So we'll get to that in one second. And again, there's some new magic. We'll talk about that. And also uh, just addressing some of the challenges we've all had. So let's talk about some of the new magic. One of the newest things is the new selection and masking space. And if you're like me, if you do extractions, maybe like I got a high school senior, she's a dancer and I want to cut her out and put her on a different background, create a collage, or maybe doing some great art piece where you're taking a lot of images and creating this kind of this scene that never existed before, right? It requires extractions. And if you've watched any of my tutorials or uh, courses before on doing extractions. You know, it's a little time intensive. <laughs> it's a little tough. Uh, it's always worked really well, but it's, it's time intensive. So now there's a new space to make all of this easier, slicker, faster. And the new space is called the selection and masking space. And it's a dedicated uh, task base just for creating really precise selections. And we actually have some new tools. Uh, one tool, you just kind of say, oh, this is what I want to keep. And another tool says, this is kind of a hard to define area, like hair. And you rub the new tool over this hair and kind of like, voila, <laughs> a better extraction. And we can use that extraction for all sorts of things. So I'll be also creating new videos for some of these things. But I just want to give you a heads up as to what to look for. Uh, here's the next big magical tool. It's called the Content Aware Crop. And maybe you're off somewhere and you shoot some awesome scenic sunset, mountains, whatever, and you get home and you realize your horizon is a little tip to the side. <laughs> How did we always fix that before? You either have to straighten it, which means cropping in and getting rid of corners. It's a little tighter. Sometimes you don't want to quite get rid of corners. But then along came content aware, which meant we could tip it, pull back a little bit. We're going to see white canvas, which means we then have to go in, select those areas, and then use Content Aware Fill. So now there's a new tool, and in one tool, it's called Content Aware Crop. We simply rotate, pull back wherever we want, leave space. When we hit Enter, it will fill in all of those areas. And that new Content Aware Crop, filling in those areas, does a better job than just selecting them and using Content Aware Fill. So the new Content Aware Crop is really something to play with. And here's the thing, you don't have to use it for, say, straightening an image. Let's say you've got a wedding and they're in front of a church or a chapel or something and you're backing up and then you realize for the design you need a little bit more sky, right? Sometimes we'd have to extend the canvas, fill, try to do Content Aware. Same thing here, we just simply use that Crop tool, expand the sky a little bit, hit Enter, whoosh, fills it in. Pretty amazing. All right, so the next tool is Match Font. And Match Font is, let's say you, for whatever reason, want to match the font from a picture. I'm talking a flat, rasterized, pixeled image. You are somewhere, you're in Vegas, whatever. You, take a, you, you say, hey, I want to take this sign, this iconic sign, I want to erase that font and put in some of my own text, but I want it to match the original look. What font is that? How do I, what do I got to go to some website and search forever and ever and ever? Not anymore. Right there within Photoshop, you literally open this image, select that area, 
and go type match font and it will show you two things. It'll show you all the fonts on your computer that match as closely as possible to that font. It'll also show you all of the fonts in Adobe Typekit that you can immediately install for free if you have the full Adobe CC suite. It'll just pull those in and I think you get a limited number of fonts if you only have the photo program. So if you have Adobe Lightroom Photoshop, I think you get some type kit. I don't think you get the full type kit, but I know you get the full type kit in the entire suite, the master suite. So if you have that full Creative Cloud suite, select that image, match font, and it says, hey, you've got this on the computer, but you've also, guess what, got these other six or whatever in type kit immediately to your availability. Just click that button, you can start typing. Amazing. And we also have this new face aware liquify. Face aware <laughs> liquify. So this is pretty neat. I see this going really well, uh, social media, making caricatures. Uh, there's a lot of use for liquefying faces in ad campaigns, really expensive ad campaigns from big high companies spending a lot of time creating kind of caricatures of faces. Now, kind of easy. You literally just kind of select the face and Photoshop detects the face, eyes, nose, mouth, and it gives you a list of sliders. And all you do is just, and there's sliders like for eye shape, sliders for the mouth, right? And you can turn it and it goes smiley, frowny, smiley, frowny. <laughs> you want to get a bigger head, whatever. And it's got sliders for all of this. It's all pre-built into the face and you just want bigger eyes, slide bigger eyes. Pretty cool. All just right there built in. And there's also a lot of updates to things like export as, creative cloud libraries, and artboards. Particularly in artboards, things like um, if you've got multiple artboards and you want to copy from one thing to the other, it'll actually, instead of dragging the sand, it'll go right to exactly the same spot in the new artboard. Uh, also improvements in uh, Adobe Stock. So you can actually do right within Photoshop, in-app purchases and searching of images. So let's say you, uh, you're designing something client approves it. You don't have to go back to Adobe Stock, buy it, and go back to Photoshop, drag the new image in. You're right there in Photoshop. You can license the image. It loads in the full version from the preview. Replace the preview with the full image right there in Photoshop. No need to even leave the program. And here's a list of a lot of other improvements, as well as if you're watching this video here on my website, brycoxworkshops.com, you will notice that I've got a lot of links uh, and also some videos uh, published today from Adobe on how to use some of these newest features and how they might work. And I'll also be producing some videos in the future uh, to add to all of my tutorials, but I wanted you to get the heads up today. Uh, so that's why I'm putting this video together. And also you'll notice in this list of some of these newest features, the oil paint filter is, uh, it now it works on some of those older lower end GPUs. So if you remember, that filter actually went away for a little while uh, with some newer uh, versions of Photoshop and then it came back but it only worked on new machines, right? So they've worked on this and tried to get the math so that it'll actually work on some of those older machines. So a lot of neat improvements. You can kind of look through this list, check out some of these videos here. And keep in mind, on my website right here, I have got, what, like 10 hours, I think, of, of, of courses specifically on training photographers to use Lightroom and Photoshop as quickly and most efficiently as possible and how to create really amazing things without it being uh, complicated. So check those out. Uh, those, all of those really major in-depth videos are from members, but I also have some free videos, so check those out if you're at all curious what my website's like. Again, my website's right here, brycox, B-R-Y-C-O-X, workshops.com. All right, check out the new Photoshop, install it, and until next time, America.